everybody. Welcome to Body Slam the Competition. My name is Chris Adams, and I'll be hosting this show today. Once again, I want to welcome you to our second edition of the new series we're putting out, Body Slam the Competition, the Independent Circuit Series. This is something that I really find very interesting and very fun to talk about because I don't have a lot of it available in my area. And when I get to talk to people about it and learn more and more about it, it, it's, it really makes my day with it. The independent circuits are really starting to step up and make a lot of great entertainment out there. And it's just stuff that you don't see on Monday nights. Monday nights is a different story altogether. You want some good wrestling? When a show comes to town, go to the show. You will not be disappointed. And this week with us, we got a great guest to tell you all about it. Uh, David Besner, also known as the American Giant. Man. David, are you on with me now? Yes, sir, I am. All right, I want to welcome you to the show here, and thank you a lot for coming on with us. I uh, talked to you just last week to ask if you were available, and luckily you were. It's great to have you on here with us. Uh, tell us a little bit about the independent circuit where you wrestle now, different places you go to. Uh, what's the, uh, if you could describe it to a, a fan of wrestling, as uh, what would make them want to come out to it? How would you describe it to them? I would describe it to him as far as a pure, uh, um, good wrestling matches going on around the area. Although there's not much uh, going on at the, not that much going on at the moment, but when there is, uh, the fans really, really get into it from what I can see. And there's many times I attend shows myself, and uh, it, it, it re- it's really great. It's really different, and uh, they really get into it. A lot of different talent coming in. Yeah, and it's like I mentioned a moment ago, it's not like what you see on Monday nights. On Monday nights, we see a lot of talking, a lot of chatting. Uh, the first 20 minutes of the show would be, I don't I don't even want to call it a build-up. I mean, it's just filling the air, it seems like, with whatever they need to do at the time to just to pass some time to the matches get underway. When you go to a, a, a show like this, uh, you get just pure wrestling. Uh, it's it's fun. There's a lot of matches in them, usually. Uh, you get to see names you don't normally get to see. And some of these names that you get to see are people that you'll later on see be the next generation of people to carry the sport of wrestling on. Um, I think a lot of people don't understand that. It's kind of like uh, minor league baseball. If you're a baseball fan, a lot of people don't realize that uh, there are stars in baseball they watch. They had to come from somewhere. They just didn't pick them out of the field, you know, and here they are playing. I remember growing, growing up when I was younger, watching the Nashville Sounds play baseball, and they had Don Mattingly on the team. And Don Mattingly was a big New York Yankee for a big, long time. Same thing goes with wrestling. You may see a name out there that you don't know who he is, but you start getting familiar with him or her. And next thing you know, you see him on TV, and you're like, hey, I saw that guy. He was great. So, I mean, it's it's just one of those things. That if people get the chance to see him, they should go out and you know see him any chance that they get. Uh, as far as... Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Well, uh, I agree with your brother, and uh, not only the new talent coming out, I think the new talent, um, in my opinion, should uh, uh, be brought with the um, seasoned uh, veteran talents, you know, like the old school combination with the new new generation. I think if you combine those two together, you would definitely um, get a good um, balance of professional wrestling as well. You know, uh, basically, you know, you see a lot of new talent, like you said before, but if you um, see guys like the seasoned veterans, like, I don't know, I would say guys like uh, the genius Lanny Popo or the Cuban assassin were wrestle the newer guys today, you definitely see some great wrestling. But these um, seasoned workers or wrestlers, so to speak, they're great athletes along, even though, you know, the new generation stars are around as well. Right, and, and these are guys that have been around for a while as well. They used to be on television. I mean, you got George South, who's still on the independent circuit wrestling nowadays. He's bringing along some younger right. talent himself. Uh, even, uh, you know, Jimmy Valiant to this day will still make an appearance sometimes, you know, for the crowd to come out there and do a little participation, not as much as he used to, but to get things going. And like you said, Lanny Poffo, uh, sometimes you see, I think Terry Funk is coming to SICW. Uh, for Herb Simmons for about a week and uh, helping out some stuff there as well. So, I mean, there are still some of these names out there, veterans. They go out there and they help make these uh, these, these young kids a little bit better, a little more experienced, uh, you know, put some words of wisdom to them. Don't hit all those high spots all the time. You don't have to get out there and do, you know, 450-degree splashes from the top rope to be big in wrestling. Just get out there and wrestle and entertain the crowd. Say those high spots exactly. when, it's ne- when it's necessary or when it's a real big event, you know. 
if you're capable of doing them. I mean, don't go out and do a Brock Lesnar. Like I said last week, uh, it was brought up to uh, Samantha Starr last week. She was on with us. I'm not sure if you're familiar with her. She's a daughter of uh, Sam Houston and Baby Doll. And uh, she was our first guest last week. And uh, we were talking about those high spots and unnecessarily doing them. And Brock Lesnar years ago tried doing uh, some of the, the backwards splash like Vader would do the moonsault and landed on his head for crying out loud. He's as hmm. big as he is. He doesn't be flying like that. He's got a great right. a great game already with what he does. I'm glad he finally found that because in his matches today, he's just the big brute that goes through and suplexes people and slams them around and beats them down, which is more fitting for him. But um, have you ever in the past worked with some of these stars that you see out there today when they were on the indie circuit? And I'm not going to call them by their current names. We'll go by their other names. But you had like a John Moxley, um, the Tyler Black, uh, Kevin Steen, uh, people like that. Have you ever, would you ever work with any of those? Um, not with those guys in particular. Uh, there's one guy who I tagged up with um, out in the Orlando area last August. Uh, he was all, he's also another seven quarter they call him uh, Monster. Um, he came to my aid at one point when I uh, was cheated out of the match by one of the dirty blondes, uh, new, you know, newer guys in the in the uh, independent scenes, and uh, I called for a tag team match, and uh, Monster came out and uh, was willing enough to be my tag team partner. And after that, we, you know, we took those guys, and uh, we beat them for one, two, three. And uh, good news about it is, like you said, him and I used combine our size together to beat these guys, and uh, we know we don't have to do no drop kicks or. Uh, all the high top rope type of thing. We just use our size, beat them down, whatever, boot, choke slam, you name it. And towards mm-hmm. the end, they got what they had coming. And uh, we got the victory out of it. That, that's what um, I'm happy with. Right. It's uh, like you said, you stick to what your game is. Don't go above and beyond it. I mean, you don't want to take a chance on getting hurt or hurt any other person you're right. wrestling with. I mean, uh, you would see the the road warriors back in the day. They made the biggest high flying bit they did was a clothesline or a shoulder tackle, coming off the ropes. Sure, I mean, sure. they weren't uh, jumping off the top rope at people and landing on them and taking all the unnecessary things they didn't have to do. They were big and strong. They could press slam you, body power slam you, suplex you, headbutt you, clothesline you, whatever. And next thing you know, you're on the ground looking up at the lights after the three count, wondering what went on. So um, and uh, what what. Uh huh. Go ahead. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I thought I lost you. Sorry. Um, you know, I was I was trained by the great Malenko, and he would always, um, you know, tell me personally, you know, do the things that you can do, and you know, with my size, uh, he taught me a lot of great things, and uh, I tried, you know, I tried to do those uh, high flying t- techniques, and it just doesn't work. And you know, uh, Malenko was a great teacher back in the day. You know the old school style, and um, and versus today's new style. You have big guys today coming out, and uh, like you said before, I try to do these things. It just doesn't work, man. I mean, um, you know, just do what you are trained to do, how you would, you know, how to do things, and it will all work out for the best. And I think um, when they see the power of a big giant um, beating down on a regular small guy, you know, you never know how the fans going to react to that. You know, they obviously will. Love it. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Oh, yeah. yeah well, it, look at the crowd. It depends. Look at the crowd these days. I mean, when when, when Lesnar comes out, all they're, all they're, they're chanting Suplex City. And he's just right. German suplexing them right and left. They're really digging that. I mean, that's all he's doing for the most part, but they're loving it. He don't have to do nothing else. Sure. But yeah, nope. it's, it's great. The, the, the great Malenko. I was going to ask you who trains you, and you kind of beat me to the puncher. That's great. The great Malenko. That's a name that's been around for a long time. It's a good wrestling family too. A lot of talent. Coming Absolutely. Out there. The great Malenko and the Malenko brothers, Dean and Joe, love those guys to death. They, you know, they train. You know, they train me, and uh, they took extra time over for me because when I first started, I didn't. You know, I didn't know how to do a standing side head like your top wrist like takedown, whatever. But um, with um, the help from Boris and Dean and Joe, you know, they, you know, they took extra, like I said, they took extra time. They treated me like one of the family, and uh, that's one thing I can certainly appreciate about them. I mean, they really cared about me, 
and a lot of the guys who went through there. And, I, you know, I, I'm honored to know those guys, even today. Yeah, I I think um, one of them, I think it's Dean Malenko, is, is he uh, working with the WWE backstage, like talent like talent stuff and everything? Talent scout? That's yeah, my understanding, like yes, yes. Right. Now, you yourself, yes. um, now, you would have wrestled. I've, I was lucky enough to see the video. Um, I saw it on YouTube. If anybody wants to watch it. Uh, you yourself have been a part of uh, the WCW at one point. Whenever they had, they were big with the NWO bit going on. And I believe you were wrestling right. Hall and Nash, and it was you and Pistol Pez Wiley, or I used to call them Pez Wiley is what he called himself at the time, I think. But uh, you had a match with them at the time. What was it like being in WCW? Well, uh, it was different. I mean, you know, uh, it was a great experience. Uh, it, was a little bit, it was a little bit tougher um, you know, working with the professional guys versus um, working with the smaller guys like my group you know, at the time. But I enjoy having experience with them. And, you know, it, I'll tell you what, brother, it, it, even though I got beaten, even though I got pinned by Kevin Nash, um, it was it was a great experience to be with. I can't, words is hard to explain it. But uh, I never thought, never thought, man, I would step in the ring and the tag with Pistol Pez to wrestle those guys with a, with a world tag team belts. And uh, it, it was it was, it was was a privilege. It was tough. And don't worry, I got myself beat up by Nash quite a bit. I know that. I, I, you know, sometimes I look at the video myself. I'm like, oh, my God, what did I do here? But, you know, to say you've been but, there, um, to say that you've been there and done it is just an accomplishment alone. I mean, just to be in that situation, a lot of people didn't get to be in that situation. Uh, at that point. So, I mean, you're one of the lucky ones that got to. And this is uh, still back in a time where, well, I think this is right about at the end of that time, actually. Uh, you know, where there used to be, um, you'd have the the stars, we'll call them the stars, they would come out and they would wrestle the, the other workers. And there'd be, these would be people who would get beat every week. Like uh, when I grew up, it was in, I grew up watching Memphis for the most part and the, and the uh, NWA, WCW. So you had like in Memphis, you had like Keith Eric and, uh, Big Lou Winston and a couple other guys I was always getting beat every week. And then WCW, you had like the Mulkey sure. Brothers. Um, and George South, actually, who uh, he's going to be on the show with us in a couple of weeks. He was one of those people in the NWA, WCW that was on there and, and was getting um, beat a lot during the show. But he also had his moments, too. It seemed like where, depending on who they would put out there, he had some good matches, I thought, him and the Italian Stallion against a couple of people of the same stature as them. I kind of miss those days in a little bit. You know, because you get to see more talent out there in the ring. And even though some of them probably weren't winning on a weekly basis, they're getting the experience of being out there on television, in the ring, in front of the big crowds. Uh, they're getting paid. It's a job. They're they're learning along the way right. as well. Do you think it'd be do you think we'd be better off having that same setup in place today that we used to have? Or are we better off doing like uh, the independents being almost like a farm-like system like some of them treat it these days, it seems like, because WWE seems to use NXT as their farm system, and NXT scours around at different independent circuits looking for new talent to bring in to their NXT. So what do you think about that? As a, a farm system type deal better or bringing the people back like it used to be, just having everybody out there on TV working and learning as they go? I, I would say um, just bring it back and learn as you go, like the old, like the old school. Even though they got new talent today, and uh, you know, the, even though WWE is working with NXT and all those guys, uh, I know um, a lot of people came up, come to me a lot of times, and say that they'd rather see the old school, you know, um, things like the good scientific wrestling matches, mm -hmm. you know, especially in the independents. And um, they get more, apparently they get more excitement out of that. Um, basic, you know, basic wrestling, is, you know, sometimes I go around to uh, places like ACW or Uproar, whatever the case is, you know, you know, they got good talent, but it's not like the old school, it's not like what it used to be, you know. And back right. in my day, when I, when I um, worked guys like um, Nancy Nett Brady, I had a great match with the Cuban assassin several times. He's a great um, worker, and uh, he's a phenomenal athlete. You know, the genius and all these guys. Um, those guys were were basically great wrestlers. 
person, you know, even though it, it's kind of different back then than it is today. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. But, um, so, yeah, a lot of fans who I run across, um, like some of them like uh, the new generation, but there's a lot of them want to see the old school. Some of the new generation is, 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 is entertaining, some of it is. I mean, it depends on what they're doing, though, you know? It just right, seems right. like the current the current product that's put out in front of us doesn't seem to be used correctly in a lot of people's eyes. And I don't want to say that I know how to run a show. I've never been into business before. I just love to watch it, love to talk about it. I I, I couldn't get in the ring and do a, a wrist lock, arm drag, take down, hip toss, anything, probably. I doubt I could do any of that stuff if I had to. But... I, you, you get to be at a point of a fan where sometimes you think you've watched it long enough that you know what you want to see and what would sell right and everything. And when they do every Monday night, it's the same match you see on a pay-per-view. It seems like every Monday night. And they repeat it on SmackDown the same week, practically. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. But then the next week, it's the same match with a slight variation or twist to it. The biggest thing right now they're wearing out to me is Alberto Del Rio and... Uh, the, the luchador guy that won the U.S. title, uh, Callisto, I think it is. They got it. And then you got the uh, Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler, but it's been going like forever and a day now. And they keep wearing this out, and they keep putting it out there for you. So the, the fact that people are turning the channel off nowadays doesn't surprise me much. I haven't watched Raw in probably not an entire show for a month. I watched a bit where Shane McMahon came back because that interested me as why he was coming back. Mm-hmm. So I watched mm-hmm. that. But other than that, like I told you, we talked the other night on online a little bit. We were talking about these things. I told you, I've been I've been looking on uh, YouTube and um, websites that stream things like uh, Ring of Honor and the New Japan Wrestling, uh, the Lucha Underground. And these things, have been, I've been finding them really entertaining. And uh, Herb Simmons' is SICW, I've been finding that entertaining as well, seeing some of that stuff. It's been a lot of the older stuff I've seen, more than the newer. But I just, it's got more of what I want. It's, it seems like more wrestling, less talk, you know, a little more action to it. So feels like more right. what I grew up with. Now, do you uh, do you have anybody that you uh, kind of take on yourself as far as training a little bit, bringing them along or a little bit, anything like that? Um, me personally, I, not really. I just train myself in the gym all the time because you, you just don't know when the next phone call is going to bring as far as the match is concerned. In fact, uh, it's my first time. I'll be going to uh, Tennessee in a couple of weeks uh, to uh, to wrestle a guy up there in an organization called the IW, the Impact Wrestling. And uh, that's my, that was my first time going up there. And I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I'm just going to do my best and, you know, just represent the United States with the American flag and just go out there and wrestle hard as a big guy Go for the win. That's all I can do. Sounds good. I mean, like I told you before, these guys, uh, these wrestling fans there in Memphis, you know, they they love their wrestling. It's uh, was always a big thing there. So I don't think you'd be disappointed with them. You say uh, now it's called Impact Wrestling itself. So what's called the, the Elite Impact Wrestling? They're they're located outside of Memphis, actually. Um, I hear they I hear they they're a great indie group, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with them. And, uh, you know, it would be most interesting to see how it's going to go. Now, how would a fan find them online if they wanted to look them up and read about that group? I'm sorry? How would a fan uh, find them online if they wanted to look them up and, and uh, see what it's about and everything? Well, like, t- um, you know, they t- say, like tickets and locations where they're going to be at, things of that nature? Uh, the best bet is go on Facebook um, to... Um, look, just punch, uh, just put the uh, elite impact wrestling and pull it right up. That's going to give all the information to a web page, and they'll give you the information that uh, needs to be known. And what was again? Just just impact wrestling. Elite impact wrestling. Oh, elite. I'm sorry. You had me curious now too. I'm sorry. I said you had me curious about them now too. I want to see where all they go to and everything. Uh, like how far across Tennessee they go. What's the furthest you traveled to go to a match that you did that, that you've gone to work? I mean, work a, a person. Uh, the farthest I ever went is out towards Orlando um, area. So, um, 
also down at one point I went to Bradenton at one point back when, when I was first started and especially out towards uh, Live Oak area um, I had a match one time when I first started with Haystacks Calhoun Jr. at the time and man I tell you what that was a rough match for me boy I mean he, I mean, he was, he was huh, with his weight and his size he can move like just like King Kong Bunny will move in the ring himself and wow. even though I got beat by him, um, you know, Haystacks was listed almost close to 600 pounds at least. And uh, um, I tell you what, with it, like I said, he can move as a big guy. I mean, not very fast, don't get me wrong, but as far as handling his weight, he can handle his weight pretty well. Back then, I don't know how he does today. I don't know whether he's retired. I, was, I suspect he was retired. But... Um, you know, that was a tough match for me when I first started. Do you have a, a favorite place you like to uh, that you like to go to? I mean, where you think your fan base is bigger than others, or? Well, um, I know that uh, around, I would say, top, or top, out towards Orlando and Tampa area, you know, I had a lot of fans, uh, especially in Newport Richie. Except um, when I first. Uh, moved to Newport, Richie. Um, there was an organization, independent organization, called the WCWF at the time, back in the mid-90s. And I got signed on with them, and uh, I beat the former NWA superstar, the Russian assassin, for the heavyweight title. And, uh, you know, I never thought, brother, I was, you know, I would take one of Paul Jones' guy back in, you know, World Championship Wrestling at the time, and wrestle a guy like the Russian. Um, beat the guy one, two, three, and uh, you just don't know. You don't know who you're going to run across. You don't know who you're going to wrestle. You know, I could be in the ring tomorrow with Hulk Hogan for all I know. You never know. Um, <laughs> but uh, you, you no, just don't know. Did, I mean, did you like Did you like Hogan when he was uh, when he when you went Hulkamania was big and everything? Were you a fan of Hulk Hogan? Uh, yeah, um, not a fan, but I, I liked how he handled himself as a persona big guy. I mean, he, he he wrestled great as a big guy, you know, especially with Andre the Giant, Big John Studd and all that. I mean, they mm-hmm. had a great matches, and I, you know, just by sitting there, whether by um, watching on YouTube or whatever, you learn from these guys, and uh, you can try it yourself. If it, if it works on you, uh, then it works. If it doesn't, you, then you move on and learn different things. Sure. And uh, one thing I'll one thing I'll make perf- um, perfectly uh, clear, though, um, the great Malenko told me one time, it doesn't matter whether you step in the ring to win or lose a match, you're already a winner because you're already in there with a guy who's been there, especially with the WWE, with WCW, New Japan, all Japan, whoever. Um, that makes you a winner because you're giving your best to do a great match at this time. Again, whether you win or lose, it doesn't really make any difference. You're already a winner because you've got the experience under the feet, and it's under your belt. Mm-hmm. And um, that's how I look at it as well. Now, and, uh, it, you know. Now, how does it I'm go? Sorry, uh, how does it go as far as uh, other companies? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave WWE out of this one. Uh, how does it feel about other companies like. TNA, for example, that seems like they're borderline right now. Um, hopefully, they'll be able to carry forward. Uh, Jeff Jarrett's new group, the Global Wrestling Federation, uh, Ring of Honor, this Lucha Underground stuff. How does it go uh, for like trying out for those? Have you have you tried out for any of those companies, or does, do you try out, or do they call you in if they like you, or how does stuff like that work? Well, basically, um, the way I know how to do it, uh, send you know send my videos to them. And uh, they make a decision, rather, you know. Okay. And uh, I, I tell them, that, you know, it's like it's like uh, applying for a regular job. You know, uh, you give them your experience. Uh, if they're interested, they'll pick you up. If not, uh, then whichever the case is. But I would like to try TNA. I would like to try Ring of Honor. Um, you know. It, 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 I think both it, of them. See how it goes. Well. Ring of Honor, anyways, on the up and up, but TNA is kind of borderline right now. They're hurting. Um, finan- I, I think it's not really financially because the the lady who runs it's got all the money, 
but um, uh-huh. create creatively, um, I think they've hurt themselves in several ways. They've uh, recorded, pre-recorded so many shows ahead of time, and it's all on the internet. I mean, everybody knows who's won the championship for the next three months or something, it seems like. And there's no right. mystery to it anymore, and they're having a hard time keeping a TV slot, I think, and stuff like that. So I would like to see them get on, on a solid TV channel again. And uh, what I'd really like to see is them get back together with Jeff Jarrett, merge those two companies together, let Jeff Jarrett be the brains that run the wrestling part, and Dixie Carter put the money out there to bring the, you know, the stars in that they want to have. I think they can do better that way. You can, I, 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 I can see you fitting in there great at TNA. I mean, that, that a big man in TNA didn't have... A lot. Of, I don't think they have any seven footers, do they? Is Abyss seven foot? I don't know. Um, but, nothing I know of. You know, yeah, nothing, nothing I know of either. I don't think. I don't think Ring. I don't think Ring of Honor's got a seven footer either. You know, it's funny you say that, Chris. Uh, you know, a lot of these, um, or especially independents, a lot of these guys, you don't hardly even see seven footers anymore. You know, mm-hmm. except for ones that are blue and You know, I, like I said, I see uh, guys like. Um, the seven foot monster, great athlete, and you decide as well. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a few others, but you hardly don't even see them, man. You know, I try to go out there and present myself, you know, in, uh, you know, I try to get a match with one of these indies, and basically, you know, <laughs> either either yay or nay, and so far, it's been really bit tough for me as well. I don't know why that is, but, you know. Um, it could again, be the style they're going to, maybe. I don't know. A lot of uh, fans are, 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 are getting into the, the cruiser weight again, it seems like. So it's hard to tell, but I don't know. I, I, I for one, am hoping that, you know, especially on the indie circuits in particular, so we can see a lot more of that. Because the ones I have seen online haven't had any big men out there that much. To see some more of that action going on, at least even if you only have one match. You know, one key matchup with a couple of big guys out there to go along with your cruiser weights and stuff like that would be great. But David, I got like about a minute left here before I got to close up. We only got 30 minutes for the show right now. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on with me, man. It's been a real pleasure talking to you and uh, talking about the indie circuit here and getting your opinion on some things. And hopefully down the road, sometime if you got time, we get you to come on with us again. Well, oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right. Well, thanks for taking time out to come on with us. I'll be talking to you again soon. I'm sure. You bet. All right. Thank you. And that was David Besner, also known as the American Giant. Uh, big on the indie circuit. You know, literally big, seven foot. I mean, you don't see any seven footers around like we were talking about a moment ago. Uh, well, a little bit less than a minute now. We're working at 50 seconds here. Just want to let everybody know the website address is www.bodyslamthecompetition.com. Actually, strike out the www. It's just bodyslamthecompetition.com. If you go there, you can see all of our uh, blogs, podcasts, and everything there. You can also visit us here at Blog Talk Radio slash Body Slam the Competition. Uh, when you go to the website, don't forget to register. We have a couple of uh, events going on right now. One uh, contest in particular you can read about if you register and get a, be a part of getting the newsletter sent that to you. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and close out for tonight. My name is Chris Adams. Thank you for listening to the show and keep enjoying wrestling. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday night as well. Our guest on Sunday night will be David Haskins. Thank you. <laughs>